Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Worship Splits with Terry. I know that I've just done a video on numbers and statistics and things, and I'm sorry that we're going to do another one, but uh, I found that, or I felt that it actually needs to be said and put out. So, you know that uh, there are premium ships obviously in the game. You know that a lot of people have premium ships, uh, that includes me. You see a lot of premium ships sailing around. And Wargaming has started putting out tier 9 premium ships. This is a recent thing. This hasn't happened for very long. Uh, up, up to recently, the highest premium ship you could get was tier 8. But then with the, I think it was the Missouri, and then the Azuma, and now there is the Kronstadt. Now, if we're going to have a quick look at this crate, there in the shop is a Kronstadt crate. Now, before we go any further, in this game, and just to put that out there and make it absolutely clear, you do not need premium ships to be successful in this game. In tier 10, there aren't any premiums, and I sincerely hope it stays that way. And in general, premiums are not necessarily much better than tech 2 ships. There are very, very good tech 2 ships. Some of the premiums are a little bit overpowered. None of this will give you a competitive advantage if you don't know what you're doing. The advantage of premiums over non-premiums is usually very, very small. And there are premiums which are worse than the tech tree uh, ships, in my opinion. So um, premiums give you a unique ship of sorts. Uh, they are collector's items, in my opinion, and they give you more resources. In that way, they do give you an advantage, but not in the actual gameplay. They just make it quicker for you to progress in the game. So... The, pre the same goes for premium time or just literally buying resources with money, such is the life of free-to-play games. But having a premium ship is not a requirement for being a very good player. It is not actually really going to help you being a really very good player. So that out of the way, let's have a look at the Kronstadt. So this crate here um, contains, well, potentially a Kronstadt. This crate is rather expensive. It costs 2,000 gold, and we get to that in a second. And if we take a look inside, there she is, the Kronstadt. Um, this is not going to be a Kronstadt review. This is about the mechanic here. Uh, the, and on top of that, you see the chances, which I think is actually relatively good of Wargaming to give us these chances. So at least we know what we're, what we're in for. And we have a 9.14 chance of finding that premium ship. And because there's only one premium ship, it will be the Kronstadt. There is also a, well, obviously, very large chance to get something else, like blueprints or boosters. So, 2,000 gold being a lot of money, but, you know, like a 9% chance isn't actually that bad. Well, let's look at some numbers, shall we? So, given that, well, the spreadsheet says we're having fun, I have made my own spreadsheet. Let's begin with the price of gold, because we know that we have to pay 2,000 gold to, well, open a crate and have a 9.14% chance of getting a Kronstadt. I have done this in Australian dollars because I don't know if this trans, uh, if the currency conversion, like if an official currency conversion translates into how much you would play in, um, in the World of Warships shop. Living in Australia, I'm relatively used to things being quite a bit more expensive than they would be if you buy them in a different market. So you have to do your own calculations here. But I've gone with the medium-sized gold package. Obviously, the um, I think the, the larger gold packages might give you cheaper gold, so to say. But I figured this is kind of a medium-sized package that somebody would actually be inclined to buy. This is 9,400 gold, and I would have to pay 47 Australian dollars for this, which gets us to a gold price of, well, pretty exactly half a cent. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? So let's have a look at this chance. As we've said, if we have a single loot box, we have a 9.14 chance and we'd have to spend 2,000 gold. In Australian currency, that would be $10. That's a decent amount of money. I can, I can buy a lunch for that. Um, so 9.14 percent is obviously not a very good chance to get it. So there's a over 90% chance that we're not getting a Kronstadt. What if we opened five loot boxes? Well, there is a fortunately a mathematical formula for calculating uh, chances. And the formula is basically 
1 minus 1 minus the chance that you're not getting it to the power of the number of attempts you're making. So, so you, you don't have to calculate that, I've done it for you. So if you were to open five loot boxes, obviously these are independent events, right? Yeah, in, a, in a way, because just because you opened one loot box and didn't get the Kronstadt, doesn't mean that you have now a better chance of getting the Kronstadt the next time. It's the exact same chance every single time. So if you were to open five loot boxes, you had a, an overall chance of about 38% of getting a Kronstadt. That is an over 60% chance of not getting a Kronstadt. You would have to pay 10,000 gold for that. And in Australian dollars, that would be about $50. Uh, that's a decent amount of money. <laughs> you, you, can do, you can do quite some interesting things with $50 in Australia. Uh, I could take my family out to the movies or I... I could, um, I don't know, rent a car for, for a day or so. So uh, let's increase our chances because, you know, 40% or under 40% chance is still not very good. So in order to get just to a 60% chance, we would have to open 10 loot boxes. And again, this is a almost 40% chance of not getting a Kronstadt. So this is just kind of over 50-50. It's basically a toy cost at this point. You Imagine you had to... And for me, that would be 100 Australian dollars or 20,000 gold. Imagine you had to, somebody gave you a coin and said, heads, so somebody would sell you a coin for 100 Australian dollars or whatever that is in your currency and would say, heads, you get the Kronstadt, tails, you get some other crap that you can get, uh, that you can grind for free in the game, pretty much. Would you pay $100 for that chance, for that almost 50-50 chance? Personally, I wouldn't. So let's uh, crank it up a bit. So what if we put 15 loot boxes open? Well, we'd get to, 76 chance, per, to a 76% chance. Now you see, this is kind of the, the thing about, uh, about chances. You never have a guarantee because it is only a 9% chance. You could theoretically open a thousand loot boxes and there's still a small but existing chance that you're not getting a Kronstadt, right? This is just chance. So. To get to a 76% chance, we'd have to open 15 loot boxes. That is a lot. Uh, that would be the equivalent of 150 Australian dollars. Um, I can buy interesting things for 150 uh, Australian dollars and things that are probably a lot more entertaining than a Kronstadt. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't pay $150 for any premium ship in the game. But... Um, and that only gives us a 75% chance. So if we want to get to 90%, chance of getting a Kronstadt and that's where you'd kind of feel like that's a 1 in 10 uh, that, that's a 9 out of 10 that that works right 25 loot boxes or 250 Australian dollars would you would have to pay for a works 9 out of 10 that you actually get a Kronstadt still has a 1 in 10 chance that you're not getting the bloody thing honestly these are not good odds for my, for my personal taste I would thoroughly recommend anybody who wants to spend in-game money to get a premium ship to not spend it on these loot boxes. And I'm sorry, Wargaming, if you're seeing this and this, this uh, kind of messes with your business model, but I don't think this is a good idea. Because first of all, tier 9 is not the best tier to play in to begin with. Because while you do get tier 8 battles, you also get tier 10 battles. <laughs> and generally, uh, people consider tier 9 to be a rather tricky tier. Uh, just because you are bottom tier and tend to be bottom tier in tier 10 games. And tier 9s and 10s are very, very much more competitive than tier 8s. So if you are a relatively new player and you get yourself into a tier 9 battle, so let, let me put it this way. If you haven't ground a ship up to tier 10 successfully and are playing it somewhat successfully in tier 10, you probably shouldn't be playing tier 9 ships on a regular basis because you are not going to have much fun in them just because tier 9 and 10 are actually rather difficult and challenging. So really, I don't think these tier 9 premiums themselves are actually super great. And I especially dislike this loot box feature for them. If you want to have a premium, keep a lookout on events, play the game regularly. There's always a couple of premiums up for grabs. Um, look for some of the mid tier premiums. They are much, much cheaper and um, make basically get yourself something for a tier that you're happy and comfortable with 
if you really, really want to have a premium. And I'm, I don't object to spending money on in-game purchases in general, not at all. It is a question of, can you spare the money? And it is a, uh, for me personally, if I can, I do, because I get something for it and I support a game that I like and keep it free for everybody else. So I'm totally not objecting to in-game purchases in general, but I think the loot box system for the tier 9 premiums is not particularly clear as to how much money you actually will have to spend to get a decent chance of one of these ships. And this is what I've tried to do today to give you a bit of, uh, well, math and statistics behind it and make it clear that in order to get to a 90% chance, you would have to pay over 200 Australian dollars or whatever that is in your relevant currency in terms of loot boxes. And there's still a good chance that you're not getting the thing. So that's it for me today. I hope uh, that helps everybody and um, just, you know, clarifies this a bit. And uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye.